Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1110. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1108 to 1110, click on the link below the video. Hey, 118, 109, and 1110 are all about comparing two lists and extracting records in list two that are not in list one. Now, in 108, we use filter. 109, we used advanced filter. And here, we want to use an array formula. Now, we want to go back and remind ourselves about how we did it with a helper column. Because these array formulas, we're going to have to simulate a helper column inside our formulas. So back in 1108, had a helper column, right? We just copied the formula down a column. The true meant that record needs to be extracted. In 1109, we used advanced filter. And check this out. This is a similar formula, the same formula basically as a helper column. But you put it in a single cell, an advanced filter would copy the formula down a column in memory. So when we get to an array formula, we're still going to have to use that same helper column. But it's all going to have to be in a single cell. The essence of comparing two lists is the match function. We saw back in 08 and 09 that we used the match function to look something up, and it would find the relative position in a list. Now, if I were to use a lookup value and look up Joe, comma, within this whole list here, it would return just the relative position for Joe, which is Joe's the first one. If I were looking up Kiki, it would return 9. But in order to simulate a helper column, we have to do an array formula. And that argument, lookup value, is expecting a single item to look up. But we're going to give it a bunch of items. By giving it a bunch of items, we're doing a function argument array operation. That means instead of one item, we're giving it a bunch. Specifically, we're giving it uh, 11 items to look up simultaneously. Anytime you do a function argument array operation, that means the function is going to spit out many answers. In fact, it will spit out 11 answers. Now, I'm actually going to lock this with the F4 because I'm going to copy this formula element and use it in our other formulas. All right, so we're going to look up a bunch of items all at once. But the lookup array, it's going to be just the same array as we did in the last couple videos, F4. comma. The items are not sorted, so we have to do exact match by putting a 0. Now, let's highlight this and use the F9 key to see what this evaluates to. And I'll give you a preview right up front. Joe is position 1. Fran is an N error. Kiki is relative position 9. So when I highlight and hit the F9 key, the function argument array operation forces match to deliver a resultant array of relative positions and NAs. That's the essential part. That is, in essence, the helper column that we saw in these earlier videos, but all in a single cell. And how do we do it? Function argument array operation. Now I simply is NA, because I want to count the items that are not in the list. Is NA, when it sees an NA, it delivers true. Anything else, it delivers a false. Well, this is going to deliver an array of items also. F9, we can see, boom, there's our patterns of trues and falses, just like the helper column controls E. Now, I want to add the trues. I'm going to use some product, and some product cannot understand trues and falses. So I'm going to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros with a double negative. F9, there's our ones and zeros. Control Z. Now I simply need to add those. This is an array operation. If I put it inside of sum, I'd have to use a special keystroke, Control Shift Enter. I don't want to. I'm going to use some product, because that array argument in some product can handle array calculations without using Control Shift Enter. So there's our count. 6. Now, let's come over here. I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to come over here, click on boop, Value and Copy, because that little part we're going to use a bunch of times. Now, let's use Index. And Index, the items we're looking up to return, all of the items. Remember, we're only interested in the ones that aren't in the list. F4 to lock that, because I'm copying it down. So there's the array, comma, the row number. Now, I'm going to need row. It's not really row, it's relative position. I need relative position 2, 4, 7, et cetera. And I need to create an array of all of the relative positions and then extract the first one, the second one, the third one as I copy the formula down. Now, we could use the small function. But instead, 
I don't want to have to use Control Shift Enter, so I'm going to use another function that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter, aggregate. Aggregate's only available in 2010 or later versions. But the cool thing is, there's a bunch of functions. Functions 1 to 13 cannot handle array operations. But functions 14 and on, 14 to 19, can handle array operations. Hey, I want to use small, so I'm using 15. By the way, the reason there's two options for this screen tip and for this function, this, the second one, notice it says ref. That's only for functions 1 to 13. You can only put references. The array up in the first screen tip, that's the one we're using. And that will handle array operations, but only for functions 14 to 19. All right, so there's our function. We're going to have to ignore errors. We're going to get divide by 0 errors. So I'm going to type 6 for options, comma. And here's the array. Now, we want relative positions 2, 4, 7, et cetera. So I'm going to use the row function. Actually, I'm going to put it in parentheses, row. Now, row delivers the row number. I'm doing another function argument array operation. If I were to highlight just the row, F9, that gives me 6, 7, 8. Well, wait a second. That's the actual rows. I don't want that. I want relative to position 1, 2, 3. So here's our trick. We subtract row of the first one. And I can see I forgot to lock. All right, you ready? I'm going to click on Reference and F4 to lock it. Now, right now, that's kind of silly. This would give us 6 minus 6 for the first one, F9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We don't want that, so we add one more plus 1. Now, there's other ways to generate an array of sequential numbers. If I hit F9, 1 to, 1 to 11, that's all of the items we have. But this one is particularly robust if we insert columns or rows and various other things uh, that will still generate 1 to 11. Now, I'm in parentheses going to take that row because I want to force the subtraction and the addition first. Then I'm going to divide by Control V. There's our series of trues and falses. Now, we do not have to convert them, the trues and falses, to ones and zeros. Oh, but we're going to. Any math operation will convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. So the act of division will get us what we want. Watch this. I click the array in the aggregate. Hit F9 to evaluate. There's a 1, an NA. 0.33, that means there's some error. That should be a, an integer. What did I do here? I have row, row. Oh, I forgot the is in a tab. I should have copied the whole thing. All right, so let's try this again. If I highlight just this in F9, you can see the trues and falls. There, we got it. So what was happening before with that? And I can click on this right here. Boop, F9. It was the NA was messing everything up. I needed trues and falses. Uh, false for a number, true for NA, Control Z. So now when I come back to aggregate and click on array and F9, there's my relative position. Divide by 0, the 6 will totally ignore that. A 2, a 4, a 7, a 9. So that's an array of what? Relative positions where the record in list 2 is not in list 1. So index is going to need first the 2, then the 4, then the 7, Control Z. That's where the small comes in. I come to the end. You can see the screen tip, comma. And now I need the first one, the second one, the third one. That's how small works. So I'm going to use rows. That's a number incrementer. I'm sitting in G6, so G dollar sign 6, colon G6. Rows will give me how many rows? 6 to 6 is 1. As I copy down, that'll be locked. This will not, so it'll give me. 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. All right, you ready? So that is going to give me row number, but only one row number as I copy down. If I, for this particular first row, hit F9, 2. That's the position. When I copy it down, then it will give me a 4, then a 7, Control Z. Let's go ahead and enter this. Close parentheses, Control Enter. I didn't have to use Control Shift Enter because we have aggregate there. I copy it down. Now, there's my list of names in this list that are not in that list. We have a few choices here, because I want to turn these nums off. One thing you pretty much want to try and avoid, like the plague, is you don't want to use if error. 
And in my Control Shift Enter book about array formulas, I time the difference between if error and the other version of the formula we're going to use. And the problem with if error is it has to run this big array formula in every cell. So the rule of thumb is, if you're doing data extraction with array formulas, if there's some other logical test besides running the array formula, then you should use it in an if. And it will calculate much more quickly. Now, on a small data set, it doesn't make a big difference. We do. We could say we have already counted how many. So we could say, hey, when rows are number incrementer, I'm going to copy that Control C. I'm going to say in the logical test right here, whoop, logical test Control V, that rows, whenever that is greater than 6, and I'm going to lock it on the row but not the column. Anytime that's greater than 6, that means we're already past row 6, which would be down here. What do we want? Notice the logical test, comma, the value if true, double quote, double quote. That's a null text string that will show nothing in the cell. Otherwise, please run the formula. The beauty of this is the array formula will be only run in the first cells where it's delivering. Down here for this num error, the array formula will never be run. Again, for a small data set, it wouldn't particularly matter. I'm going to come to the end. Simply Control Enter. That puts the formula in the cell, keeps the cell selected. Double click and send it down. That is beautiful. Now, if I come over here and type Timmy, Now Timmy shows up on our list. So the only reason you would ever do a big, huge, gnarly array formula like this is if you want it to update automatically. As we saw back in 108 and 109, there's much easier methods for uh, comparing two lists and extracting the ones that are either in the list or not in the list. I'm going to Control Z on that. Now, if we actually wanted the items that are in both lists, like Joe, I'm going to just copy this over here and change just this. Instead of is an A, we're interested in the numbers. Ready? Now there's five. Now I come over here. I have to do the same thing over here. And just for this one part, number is number. All the rest of the formula is the same. So Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And now here is the formula for extracting items that are in both lists. Zip. And here is the formula for extracting items that are in list two but not in list one. All right, that was wild. 108 filter, 109 advanced filter, 1110 array formulas. I like the advanced filter one the best. All right, we'll see you next trick.